All right, howdy. Today what we're going to do is we're absolutely going to become perfect at the unit circle today, okay? I know that that gives a lot of people trouble, but if there was one thing to take from high school that'll apply to all math classes, it's going to be the unit circle. So let's get that down once and for all. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the first quadrant, okay? And in the first quadrant, we know that along here, along the x-axis, this is going to be at zero degrees. Okay, and then along the y-axis here at the top, this is going to be pi over 2. And then we're going to have three angles in between. Our first angle is going to be pi over 6, which is going to be 30 degrees. Our angle right down the middle is going to be pi over 4, which that's going to be 45 degrees. And then finally, our last angle is going to be up like this, and this is going to be pi over 3 which is going to be 60 degrees, okay? Now, whenever I'm looking at the first quadrant, there's only three numbers that I'm worried about. And those three numbers are 1, 2, and 3. Because all of these numbers are all over 2, and they all have a square root in the numerator, okay? So those are really the only three numbers that I'm looking for. And the last thing that I want to take into account is that cosine deals with the x, and sine deals with the y. And the reason that I think of it like this is because, check this, cosine of pi over 6. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm visualizing uh, pi over 6. And look how, look how far I have to travel in the x direction relative to how far I have to travel in the y direction. Therefore, since cosine deals with the x, I'm going to choose the biggest number of them all, which is square root of 3 over 2. And by that same logic, the sine of pi over 6, okay, look how short I have to travel, okay, in the y direction relative to the x direction. And so it's because of that that this is going to be 1 half, okay. This works for all of them, because let's check out cosine of pi over 4. For cosine of pi over 4, heck, notice how it's right in the middle. And because it's right in the middle, my pi over 4 is, just pick the number in the middle. That's square root of 2 over 2. So it's going to be square root of 2 over 2. And the sine of pi over 4 is also in the middle. You know, and here's the thing. Any pi over 4 is going to be square root of 2 over 2. Whether it's cosine or sine doesn't make a difference. The cosine or sine of any pi over 4 instantly I know is square root of 2 over 2. And then finally, cosine of pi over 3 check out how little I have to travel in the x direction. And because I have to travel very little in the x direction, relative to the length I have to travel in the y direction, that's why for cosine, I'm picking the smallest number. Cosine, that's one half. And then finally, the sine of pi over three, by that same logic, since sine is going in the y direction, I have to travel really far in the y direction, that's gonna be square root of three over two. Okay, so that's how you deal with that first quadrant. And then finally, taking a look at the zero and the pi over two, cosine of zero, since I'm going, since it's all in the x direction, okay, none in the y, that'll be a full one, okay? A unit circle means that um, at the edges of the circle, it's a distance of one unit away from the origin. And sine of zero, Okay, sine is zero. That's zero because I'm going zero in the y direction. And then likewise, cosine of pi over two. Okay, notice how uh, pi over two, I'm not going in the x direction here. This is purely in the y direction. So cosine would be zero. And then the sine of pi over two. Okay, it's all in the y direction, which is why it's going to be one. Okay, so if you want these middle three numbers, deal with the middle three angles, and then at the edges, we're just going to have one, and we're going to have zero. Okay, and if you want to think of it, technically, I can think of this as a square root of four over two, right? That's still just one, and that's zero over two, which is, you know, just zero. Okay, so that's the first quadrant, but once you're perfect at the first quadrant, then the entire unit circle becomes easy. Because what I'm about to write here doesn't have any, any intrinsic value. What I'm about to write here is how I remember what goes into each quadrant. Okay, So what I'm going to do in quotations, I'm going to put quote unquote, this is pi in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, what I'm mentally thinking, I'm thinking minus 1. Okay, Here in the third quadrant, I'm thinking 
plus 1. And then finally in this fourth quadrant, I'm thinking times 2 minus 1. Now what do I mean by that? Well, here in the first quadrant, we're going to have pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. Every um, numerator just has a pi in it. Okay? And you get your 6, your 4, and your 3. Now what do I mean by minus 1? Well, what I mean by minus 1, check this. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So I know that 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant. Here, 4 minus 1, right for my pi over 4, 4 minus 1, that's 3. So I'm going to have 3 pi over 4. And then finally for the 6, 6 minus 1 is 5. So I know that 5 pi over 6 goes into here. Okay, well, same thing for this third quadrant. Now this is a plus 1. So if I want to do my pi over 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. So 7 pi over 6. For my pi over 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. That's 5 pi over 4. And then 3, 3 plus 1, that's 4. Uh, 4 pi over 3. And then finally, here in this last, in this fourth quadrant, I'm going to do times 2 minus 1. So if I do my 3, 3 times 2 is 6 minus 1, that's 5. So I know that 5 pi over 3 goes here. Uh, for my 4, 4 times 2 is 8 minus 1 is 7. So I'm going to go 7 pi over 4. And then finally for my uh, 6, 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 minus 1 is 11. So this is going to be 11 pi over 6. And then to fill the corners, this is going to be 0. We already know 0 and pi over 2. Out here, this is going to be pi. Out here, this is going to be 3 pi over 2. And you come full circle, 2 pi is once again here at the edge. Now here's why. Imagining the first quadrant is so important, and thinking of this is, is because any cosine of pi over 6, whether it's cosine of 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, you know, 11 pi over 6, cosine of any pi over 6, will always be square root of 3 over 2. The only thing that you need to worry about is, is it positive or is it negative? So let me do some random examples, right? If I have, like, say, the cosine, cosine of, I don't know, let's go 7 pi over 6. What I'm mentally visualizing is I'm mentally visualizing this first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, I know that cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. So the square root of 3 over 2 is not in doubt. The only thing in doubt is, is it positive or is it negative? Okay? And 7 pi over 6, I'm looking like, okay, so that 7 pi over 6, that's plus 1. And I'm thinking, okay, plus 1 that's in the third quadrant, right? So you're in the third quadrant. And in the third quadrant, your x is negative. And because my x is negative down here in the third quadrant, that's why that's a negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, and if I did another random one, let's just say I want to do the sine of 3 pi over 4. Okay, first thing I'm doing is I'm visualizing the first quadrant, and the sine of any pi over 4 is always square root of 2 over 2. That's not in doubt. The only thing in doubt is, is it positive or is it negative? And 3 pi over 4, that's minus 1, right? That's in the second quadrant, 3 pi over 4, okay? And I'm thinking, all right, the second quadrant, my y is positive. And because my y is positive, sine of 3 pi over 4 is also going to be positive. This would be a positive square root of 2 over 2. And this is how you're going to attack the unit circle. Visualize the first quadrant. Then, after you know whether it's a 1, 2, or 3, all square root of those over 2, or if it's a 0 and a 1, then visualize which quadrant it's in, and then determine positive or negative.